Hello YouTube, this is Bowtide Media, and today we've got another episode of This Week in EDM. But this episode is going to look very similar, but it's going to be slightly different. So I've been doing streams uh, the last two weeks on Saturday at 2 p.m. So if you want to come join those streams, I actually listen to all of these songs. There's 28 this week, those songs in that stream. And the fun part about that is that you, you can actually come and vote. Vote alongside me and a whole bunch of other people about what you type how you think the song is. If you think it's a standout, if you think it's good, meh, or bad. And there is no trash technically for voting because YouTube will only give me four options uh, in the poll. But uh, we do have five categories. And so this episode, rather than just being my opinions, is going to be collective opinions. So I've taken the percentages of all the polls and what people have said, and I've put them and used some little math to figure out where they all rank from trash, bad, meh, good to standout. And so that's what we're going to be going over this week. So this is going to be a little bit more informative of the track and just general opinions and what general people are or what my the chat has said or the community here surrounding these videos but uh, so it's less me focused more everyone focused so I think that's a good I think that's a good little balance and so uh, let's get into it with our first trash song of the week. There's just one, and it is I Will Stay, the remix, uh, originally by Flux Pavilion and Liquid Stranger featuring Turin Breaks. Um, Chad just really, uh, we didn't really like the song at all. It sounded really messy and weird. I think one of the best comments about this was it's tried to be really gritty, but just wasn't. Like, it fell flat. There really wasn't, it wasn't dynamic at all. The song just felt really bad, honestly. I don't know why it got a remix. Uh, moving into the bad category now. That's just, there. that was it for Trash. Uh, bad, there's just two bad songs this week. Uh, up first, and our 27th song of the week, uh, is Chasing Stars, Alesso and Marshmallow featuring James Bay. Uh, I mean, as much as there is a hatred towards Marshmallow, uh, the song really isn't that good. The drop was eight bars. It's like, it was so insanely short, and it just sounded like everything Marshmallow has produced post the Fortnite uh, events that he had. And uh, it just, yeah, it just fell flat. And I'm surprised people are listening to Marshmallow as much nowadays. And um, I mean, I expect a little bit more from Alesso, but I guess not. Uh, up next, the other bad song of this week is the Titanium, uh, the crazy long title here, Titanium, David Guetta and Morton Future Rave Remix, originally by David Guetta featuring Sia. Uh, this one just felt weird. Something about it felt off. I don't think the song really ever needed a remix. And this is, I guess, David Guetta and Morton's idea of what the future of music sounds like, a future rave. But to me, it just sounded like pretty derivative, kind of uh, deeper, darker house, and there wasn't much to it. And so I think a lot of people agree. That's why it's in the bad category. Up next, moving into the meh category, songs that were meh for the week, uh, was Play the Music by Matroda. It was a weird kind of deep house track that just said, play the music over and over and over and over again. It was really repetitive, really derivative, and it wasn't necessarily a bad song, but it was just, it was so boring and it was quite annoying, those vocals, and so that's why it's here. Up next, we have uh, Demisour, or Demis Demisour, um, something like that, uh, by Excision and Kai Wachi. Uh, a lot of people said that this sounded a lot like old 2015 Excision, and he hasn't been making anything new since then. And it was just weird. There was this middle section where they just started naming off dinosaur names, and it was really cringe, honestly, and it just, it, it didn't hit very well. Up next, we have Reaching Out by Dylan Francis and Bo Anderson. Uh, this one uh, was, it just sounded so much like other songs right now. So much of music right now is just these derivative, boring, electro-pop slash housey tracks that just are the same tones, the same thing over and over again, and there really was nothing new or unique about this, uh, this track. Next up was uh, Need to Feel Loved by Darren Styles featuring uh, Jeld Vandell. Uh, this one was interesting. At first, the sound, uh, the drop, it, it was, it sounded, there was a bit of dissonance between the drop and the verse sections, where it just sounded like a little bit of separate songs, but the first bit of the drop sounded not bad. But then it just, over and over, the same sound of that same drop, keep, kept going, oh, and it's oh, still, oh, still going. And so, it, this is another one that was just, it kind of dragged down a little too long. It was only like 3.45 in terms of its length, but um, it just felt like it was, it kept going and kept going, and it didn't need to. Up next is Droids by Lucid, and this one was uh, a pretty interesting because Lucid, known for his kind of weird experimental house, uh, like techno fusion type stuff, this one was just like a 
your basic French house track. It was pretty calm, uh, not a lot going on in the song, but uh, I think for people that like that kind of genre of more the funky, groovy, it felt like it could have been on like a 90s radio throwback uh, like station. And uh, it was okay, and that's why it's here in meh. <laughs> Up next, the uh, oddly spelt uh, Loev. Uh, it's just love spelt poorly. I don't understand what it means by Insane Like, an older name here. Uh, this one just really didn't sound like it was anything new or grand or creative. Uh, there was a really weird back section with a vocoder that kind of just kept dragging on. It really didn't have a whole lot to it. And for some reason, it just, there was like 45 seconds to a minute of just like this weird vocoder noise over and over again. That was a big turnoff, I think, for the first half of the song, which was a lot better than that back half. But uh, for the most part, it was a turnoff. Up next is Generals, the Link remix, originally by Trampa, Killapee, and Volgatron. Uh, this took, uh, for me personally, my favorite song off of the Disrespect album from Trampa, and uh, just made it kind of like a boring dubstep track, or like, it was mellow rhythm, something like that. It was just, uh, it just wasn't doing it. It took all the kind of flair and joy and kind of passion of the original song, and just kind of brought it all down into something that was just a little more boring and a little more just not as creative and just pl plain and bland is the best way to put it. Up next we have Bad by Kumarion, the second last track we talked about in the uh, stream. And uh, this one I think had some good sound design and some cool quality stuff in it, but for the most part it wasn't anything really brand new. It was kind of like a, uh, a darker atmospheric, uh, almost house d &B style track that uh, was fun to listen to at first, but really didn't do it uh, in the end. Up next was OK Computer by Lemater and Rebmo. Uh, this one was a really interesting song. It had a lot going on in it. It was a little experimental in some areas and super funky and groovy, had some uh, disco elements as well. It was kind of a little all over the place. And uh, in the end, I think it was, it, it did a, a lot of different things, but it didn't really do many things super, super well, which is why I think it just landed in the meh category. Up next is Scared by Sabai featuring Claire Ridgely. Ridgely. Uh, this one was really interesting because uh, it was more uh, house or EDM tuned pop music, if that makes sense. Because Sabai does a lot of popper stuff, but this one sounded like an introduction into EDM music from a pop artist, if that makes sense. So it's like, it's it's as if he was always doing pop stuff and now he's doing a little bit more EDM. It had a, it was like actual house song rather than just a kind of boring future bass electro pop stuff. So it was house, but it had a nice kicking hit to it. But other than that, it really didn't give a whole lot or offer much else really. And so that's why it's there. And our last meh song of the week is Control Me by Bensley, uh, something that I enjoyed a little bit more, but I think a lot of people set seem to not like it as much as especially All Night and Vex. It's got a nice little fun atmosphere to it that uh, was kind of a little more, it wasn't as spooky as Vex was, but felt um, entertaining and a little more unique and creative. But uh, other than that, didn't have a whole lot to offer, I think, in the general sense of it. Moving into the good category, and this is our last category for the week because there are no standouts, sadly. So no standouts this week, but we have a Lightning Drive by DDD. Uh, it's, I believe, Color Base is the name of this genre, an artist that I have heard for the first time on this stream. A lot of people really, really like DDD. Uh, I, for the most part, thought it was fairly meh, but uh, you guys seem to enjoy it a lot. So if you like that uh, melodic rhythm or the Color Base, I believe is what it's called, uh, you will like Lightning Drive. I really don't have a lot to say because I don't like rhythm. So so that's where that's going to be. Uh, up next is I Know by Direct. Uh, a lot of people said to say, uh, seem to say that uh, it was a below average direct song but because it's direct, it was really good. And that's just not having a direct bias, I think. That's just generally saying direct produces a lot of really good music. And so it was a great song, but for direct, it was just a little bit below average. And uh, I agree with the sentiment. It's his first, I think, solo song in quite some time. Uh, if I remember correctly, I may have not at all, but... Up next is Never Enough by Disclosure with a new EP coming out. It's very much a clubhouse EP or lounge house as I like to call it with a lot of fun percussion in it and uh, just those nice deep house hits that would almost be categorized as deep house. And so that's why I have this little lounge house category that I like to put it in. But uh, it's great. Uh, it was a little long. Uh, I think this was like five minutes or something like that. And so it, it dragged on a little bit. Something that I thought was really good, though. Uh, I think it was more 
critically friendly, I would say, something that is uh, really, if you dive in deep to the depth of it and the background story of it all, it is a good song. Uh, yeah, I ultimately say I think it's a good song, but not one that you would really go back to and listen to a whole ton. So I think a lot of people recognize the quality for it, but or the quality of it, but they wouldn't really listen to it a ton more. Uh, up next is Underworld by Pixel Terror, uh, one that I personally didn't enjoy, but uh, the new EP just came out for Pixel Terror. Um, uh, I can't remember the name of it. Is it Underworld? No, I don't think it's Underworld. But um, <laughs> new Pixel Terror EP, and this was the song that I chose to highlight from it. And uh, I, I necessarily didn't really like it. A lot of people also said that they had a Pixel Terror bias and that they loved it just because it was Pixel Terror and their great kind of mix of the mid-tempo and the dubstep sounds. Uh, and for me, I thought it was a little messy in those areas where it didn't sound like it really knew what it wanted to do one way or another. But uh, a lot of you guys seem to enjoy the Pixel Terror track, and so that's why it's up here. Up next in our top 10, our 10th song of the week is Ocean Avenue by Fairlane and Ryan Graham Scott. Ryan Scott Graham, I should say. Uh, I remember hearing somewhere that I think this is a cover of some other song. I'm not 100% sure, but it sounded a lot like an older, uh, early 2000s kind of alt-rock or, um, yeah, alt-rock, alt-pop, um, pop-rock, <laughs> pop-rock or alt-rock song from the early 2000s that was mixed in with a little bit of an EDM flair, kind of given a nice uh, Fairlane flair, I would say, to it. And so it was a little different than what Fairlane has produced as of recent, but I think it is still a solid song with some nice guitar riffs. And uh, if you like that kind of early 2000s stuff, something like a Blink-182, I think you'd uh, like this one quite a bit. Up next, number nine is Wish by uh, Ahoba Ayoban. I keep signing the Ahoban for some reason. Ayoban featuring Sumina. Uh, this song, and also uh, his last one with Resonate, was uh, pretty good. It's kind of a J-pop, future bass -y stuff. Uh, I have no idea what they are saying because it's all in Japanese, um, I, I believe. Uh, but uh, it was still a fun song with a great atmosphere to it, and uh, I'm really liking a lot of what uh, uh, Ioban is doing post-Monster Cat, or since, they, since his last song on Monster Cat. So uh, I like the direction. Up next, number eight is A Song About You by Raziel. Uh, Raze, Razehel, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm realizing as I did the stream that uh, people are like, oh, you pronounce it that way. And so I'm maybe producing all these or pronouncing all these wrong. Uh, but um, yeah, so this is coming up on the 10 year anniversary of NCS, their own album there. Uh, I wasn't a fan of this. It sounded pretty basic to me. It was very high pace, high energy song that had uh, like a lot of, it sounded a little, uh, a lot of chip tune or 8-bit uh, inspiration to it, which is, I think, uh, uh, NCS does a fair amount of that. But um, you guys seem to like it quite a bit from Brazil, and so uh, that's why it's in the good category, at least. Uh, number seven is Keep Up the Pace by Stonebank. Uh, another one that was uh, good. It's like a good song, but uh, just for Stonebank, I think it's a below average Stonebank song. And that seemed to be the sentiment shared with a majority of people in the chat or on the stream, I would say. Uh, it's a good song. It, it was like a house. It was a bass house track that I don't think was as good as the Life and Death or the Monument EP but um, fr from Stonebank's past. But uh, still not a bad song, especially if you love Stonebank. Our number six song of the week was LSD by Jessa Gent and Zang Griffin, a super, super short track. I think this was 218 or something like that. Uh, super fun sound design. The second drop, I think, was a lot better than the first drop. A lot of people shared that same sentiment with me. Uh, but just something that I would have loved to hear explored a little bit more. Explore the sound, explore the space, explore the track, and make it a longer song. And uh, I think a lot of people just said it sounded like an interlude. Uh, and so it, maybe if it was an upcoming album or something like that, it does sound like an interlude-ish style track, but uh, still could. Up next is Shattered by Ace Aura and Nitrix. Uh, this is something that um, another color base artist here, uh, I don't listen to a ton of Ace Aura in the, or ever really. I do a little bit of Nitrix, but uh, for the most part, I don't listen to either artist, but you guys seem to really enjoy the song quite a bit. A lot of you said it wasn't either of their best songs, but still a solid track. Um, and something that I actually, uh, it's a little, I think it was melodic rhythm or this color based stuff that you guys are talking about. And uh, I, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit for rhythm and me be, not being a rhythm guy, uh, I, I did enjoy it quite a bit. Up next, number four is Never Change by Apache and uh, Weimer. Uh, this is a, assumingly the second song from an upcoming album or EP or something like that, just the way it's presented on Spotify. Uh, Apache has these 
crazy fusions of orchestral music and this dubstep, this dark, brooding, gritty dubstep style. And uh, this song had quite a bit of screaming in it, which was a bit of a turnoff for me in some areas, and I think a turnoff for some others too. Uh, I like the first song, Time Warp, a lot better than this most recent Apache track, but uh, it's still good. Incredible atmosphere. Apache is uh, known for that quite well. And our bronze medalist of the week is Titanic by Cosmos Midnight. Oh, they're just such good producers. They're just fun, funky, lighthearted, almost summer vibe tracks. Cosmos Midnight is just known for those kind of just, yeah, lighthearted, fun, like you always put you in a good mood style track. And uh, this one was really no exception, I think. Up next, our number two spot was Treading Water, the Cloud Nun remix by, originally by Said the Sky. Uh, a lot of you said that this was one of your favorite Cloud Nun songs in a long time. And uh, I, I liked it. I didn't think it was one of his absolute best in a long time. It was a little different, though, in terms of what he was doing in the chill out genre or aspect. Um, Cloud Nun likes to be on this more garage style, chill out stuff uh, genre. And this one was a little bit more on the electro poppy style. And it was a little more melodic and a little more uh, flowy, I would say, rather than more abrupt as the uh, garage or stuff. And so still a good song. And uh, that's our number two song. And our number one song of the week, not a standout, just a good, by the way, that my math ended up working out, uh, is Set Me Free by Chime and Axel Boy. You guys loving the mellow dub. Chime and Axel Boy are here with a solid mellow dub track. Not something that I particularly thought was incredible or blown out of this world. Like I think a lot of the AU5 and Chime tracks are probably, uh, some of this other stuff are better than this one, but still an absolutely solid track that a lot of you seem to really, really enjoyed. I have not heard anything from Axel Boy in the past. And so uh, this was a good first introduction to Axel Boy. Uh, I don't know how much of production it was him versus Chime, but still a great track. And uh, that concludes this week in EDM. Let me know what you guys think of this new format. Do you like that it's not just my opinion, that it's the general community's opinion? I did a little bit of back and forth there of some of mine, some of the community's opinion. And um, if you want to be a part in how these list is ordered and sometimes even get to choose some of the songs uh, with DDD was the one that was a late addition onto this list. Come join the stream happening Saturday at 2 p.m. Hopefully regularly. I'm not sure how consistently I'll be able to do that in the future. But for now, it is Saturday at 2 p.m. So join the streams. But uh, I've been Bowtie Media, and I will see you guys in another video.